All right, this is John Krasinski, Pittsburgh Soccer Now. Uh, to my left, it looks like, I think the way we're set up tonight, uh, it's Mark Goodman, Mark Asher Goodman. Great to have you on. I've been doing these post-game interviews with the high school kids and uh, coaches, and it's been fun. But uh, miss I miss some of our fellow Riverhounds, um, you know, Pittsburgh soccer writers and everybody. I just miss seeing everybody. So it's great to see you, at least by Zoom. H how are you doing, Mark? We're doing great here. I mean, everything's good. Both uh, one of my kids had a cold, so that means that everybody stayed home for, you know, mm -hmm. digital online learning. And I taught a class and it's total chaos, you know, every day, just like everybody else who's uh, dealing with these un uh, uncertain times. So to all of you out there in the intertubes dealing with these uncertain times, I feel it, man. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, and you know what's getting us through it is a little bit of soccer, right? Or a lot of soccer, or yeah. It's I was just telling you before we went on. It's been uh, it's been a lot to for us at Pittsburgh Soccer now to keep up with. I feel like today was just, you know, we'll talk about this later. We won't get into it now, but we've had the you know the Riverhounds news yesterday about Robbie Mertz and Thomas Van Kiesel, and then you've got the, the, the all eight um, classifications of boys and girls high school soccer have advanced to the PIAA finals, but number one team in the country the university of pittsburgh panthers look like uh they're they're heading to the acc championship game mark what's your impression of this this pit uh pit panthers men's uh soccer program in an improbable year all around something very almost impossible has happened to uh sub quote uh, a famous baseball commentator you know the season started out with a very quiet sub announcement by the pit athletic department that the star striker edward kiza was not returning to the team there's still never been any disclosure about what that is all about and then it was kind of like well how is the team going to do without their star striker and what is soccer going to look like in the acc in this strange year when many other conferences completely shut down men's and women's soccer before the season ever began. They just say, you know, fall soccer is a bad idea. Um, and, you know, uh, statewide and nationwide, a lot of club teams and a lot of high school teams are either deciding or not deciding to play interconference. You know, the ACC went ahead. And the interesting thing about Pitt was they had some strong players. They had some kind of unknown players. Um, and the rest of the ACC was kind of recharging. A lot of really talented ACC teams had lost some really high level talent. Virginia has been a top, top team for two years, but they had a lot of graduates last year. Clemson had a spectacular team last year. They lost possibly the best player in the country in uh, uh, Robbie uh, Robinson. Mm -hmm. um, and so the ACC was kind of scrambled to start the year. And, and I, I think maybe it was a little bit more up for grabs, but more importantly, you know, Pitt came back with a number of freshmen who had excellent years coming into their sophomore years this year. A guy like uh, Jackson Wolte, um, a guy like Valentin Noel, uh, and they, they progressed. You know, I think the other thing that's interesting about a freshman is, is was a freshman who got a little bit of time last year going to be, um, you know, a, a flash in the pan? Did they get a chance and then somebody would pass them on the depth chart? Or were they the real deal? Are they going to progress? And so far, I mean, the pit lineup, if you look at it, is absolutely chock full of freshmen and sophomores. Mm -hmm. And the freshmen have all hit. They've all clicked. And the sophomores have all gotten better from last year. And I think that's the most important thing to say about Pitt this year, which is they've been surprisingly better than anyone expected. And they've been, you know, uh, uh, like just as good as last year, but better, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, and it, I mean, you can see the the ability that Jay Vidovich has to recruit just top level players. I mean, we you talk about a sophomore, a 23 year old sophomore center back, Arturo Ordonez. I mean, he's like a man among boys out there. Sometimes I'm watching him play, and that's you, you see a lot of that. You've got some experience, and when we say experience, we mean guys that have played in Europe, played at you know different levels uh, that can contribute, come in and contribute right away. And, you know, you see the, the lo some of the local players like, you know, and Anthony Harding or Luke Mort or Luke Peprak, they're just, they're just fighting to get into the, into the lineup. And tonight, like, for, and, and uh, on Sunday, for example, the local players had an opportunity to play because Burton Jockison, uh, the forward who, a freshman forward from France, who came in and has made an impact, 
uh, had to sit out. I, you know, we don't know the specifics. Uh, we do know that some pit players couldn't play because of COVID protocols. Um, obviously, you know, this has been the thing. You, know, you don't really know. But anyway, so they, you know, they, they won the other day. Uh, pretty, you know, they kind of fight tooth and nail. They, they had the lead, you know, against Duke pretty much. But tonight, they just, you know, they play a frantic style. They come at you fast. They, you know, they get, they, they find those openings. They, they, and they try to strike quickly. And, and that's really what happened in the first half. Three, three goals, um, three quick strikes. And, and they're pretty impressive. Yeah, they play a um, – the way I see it, and, you know, everything is relative to, you know, the, the viewer. I think the wonderful thing about soccer is I can say something and you can say something, and they can be fairly opposite and still both be true. They play something of a box uh, in the midfield defensively. Uh, uh, Petkovic uh, and Noel and uh, Mitrovic and Wolte. And they just kind of rush into those zones and take the ball off of you. Um, you know, they're, they're pressing the ball carrier, but they're also running into the lanes to create turnovers. And what that does is it creates great opportunities in transition. Um, they do a little bit of pressing into the corners, but I don't think that that's the main thing. I think what they're really doing is a lot of really smart midfield pressing. You know, that all goes to Jay Vidovich and the way he's setting things up. Um, and I think the way that it, it went both against Duke, but really against Notre Dame was, was that, that kind of like high pressure, high intensity at the beginning of the game, you know, they swept, swept the ball away from you at midfield and then rammed it down your throat at the other end. They got bang one, two, three goals by the half and, you know, say goodnight, Sally. There wasn't much else to, to talk about this game because the second half was basically like, you know, can you hold it? You know, there was the point at which, they were up to nothing and, you know, you can use the old saw. It's the most dangerous lead in soccer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. once they just pushed past that and it was three goals, it was kind of like, well, this one's pretty much in the books. Let's just see what they do in the second half. The second half was a little different in the sense that um, Notre Dame adjusted a little bit at halftime. They, they came out in a, in a hard press. Um, and I think they rattled Pitt for about 20 minutes. And mm -hmm. then my sense of Notre Dame was they ran out of gas. Like the energy it takes – to rush and rush and rush and press and press and press, kind of got to them. And and Pitt's a very fit team, and they're they're in in really good shape, and and they were ready for it. So they endured it and hung on for that three to one win. Almost made it four, but you know, um, the last thing I'll say about the kind of overall no, no, notion of the game is that uh, Notre Dame had their chances. I mean, I really think Notre Dame had a lot of opportunities in the final third yeah. that they just didn't take. I mean, there were a lot of plays where you know, the ball was passed across the box or there was a nice rush into the box and there was just a sloppy final touch. And I think one of the other things you can say about Pitt this year is that they are technically proficient. I mean, they absolutely are as clean on the ball as it gets. The dribbling in the final third is beautiful. Um, and that's because of what you said at the beginning, which is um, Coach Vitovich's ability to recruit has been exceptional. And he's finding guys who are a cut above who Pitt was getting three and four and five years ago. And, and that's huge. And that, of course, you know, in college soccer and in ACC soccer will only build on itself. They yeah. will stamp themselves as a talented team and people will say, I want to play there. And that's, that's what's happening. It's definitely building uh, there where the depth, like I said, guys coming off the bench are hungry and they're talented, but, but, you know, he's got guys that are coming in that are ready to play. Uh, I will say though, I thought, there, you know, Notre Dame, <laughs> Nico Camposano made a couple real big saves. I mean, it was a, I think it was still one nothing, and Notre Dame had a bunch of set pieces, and they, they got, I think they had two corners in a row, and that second corner, a, a redirected header, Camposano made just an unbelievable save, and then it makes another one later, it was another diving save. I think uh, he finished with six saves. Uh, Notre Dame had eight shots on target tonight uh, and 18 total shots. So Pitt, I, one thing I mentioned in my analysis on Pitt uh, defensively was it, it seems like they're always scrambling. It, they don't look like, like I said, we've, we've been uh, spoiled here in Pittsburgh watching high level soccer. We've been watching high level soccer defensively the last three years and the Riverhounds. It's just, you know, they know how to just swarm and prevent teams from even getting good shots off with Pitt. It feels like, they're 
they're just scrambling right now. They haven't had a shutout all year. So, you know, get the high scoring. I mean, Sunday's final could be, uh, I don't know. You, I think you take the over, right? Yeah. I mean, I think you, you bring up a good point. One of the things that happens in this formation is that Mirkovic or um, Wolte kind of, they often press high. And what that means is like, or sometimes both of them are. Yeah. And what that means is the back line is by itself. It's like, you know, it's Arturo Adornez and Bryce uh, Washington are kind of like on their own. The fullbacks do a really good job of, yeah. of covering wide. But, um, and Or Ordonez is, I mean, I think the thing that, that's been remarkable, Arturo Ordonez was w had a great year last year mm -hmm. as a very old freshman. I think he's 23 years old and a sophomore right. now. Right. Um, and he just plays at a very high level. Um, you ask the question, though. Clemson is a very good team. They were a very good team last year. We covered them extensively in the pregame last year. I watched the, the first match, uh, uh, the, the – uh, the uh, the undercard battle, if you will, um, of uh, of uh, Virginia versus Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, versus uh, Clemson, and I was less impressed. And I think uh, I think it will. I think Clemson is the underdog in this one, wow. um, which compared to last year, they were right. absolutely the favorites. I mean, they're just they're they're very talented physically. They're extremely mm -hmm. fast. Um, they're extremely physically strong and able. I don't think they're as technically proficient and I don't think they're as defensively clean. So we'll see how it plays out. But I think you're right that like, you'd be better off betting for a three, two finish than a nil nil draw uh, going in. If you're, if you're going to take this one to Vegas. Yeah. Well, I'll take it. I mean, I, I hope it happens. I mean, we, we, I love, I love, I enjoy watching high scoring soccer and I think people want, like to see their goals. And, you know, the one thing about this pit team being number one, now having a Sunday afternoon game at noon, you know, maybe they'll get a lot of uh, new viewers. You know, a lot of people might, uh, they're playing for an ACC championship. So this might be a, a really good shot in the arm for soccer in Pittsburgh. And uh, hopefully it'll be a nice, you know, viewing audience and people will see this 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 program. Playing for, you know, there's not too many programs in this, this area that have lifted trophies at the college level, at the professional level. So I know it's an ACC championship. There's at this point, the ACC does not have plans to play any further postseason tournament in the spring. So this is this is a prestigious soccer title. I mean, you, this is the the most difficult conference, best conference in the land, and it's no argument. So and because for, and, be, yeah. and because the NCAA decided not to hold the College Cup, um, and because the Big Ten didn't play at all this year, yeah. you could argue with the exception of the SEC who did go ahead and play, the ACC has generally been the best college conference in soccer. You could argue that whoever wins the ACC tournament is the de facto NCAA championship. The fact that this is the matchup between the number one ranked yeah. team in the country and the number two ranked team in the country means that realistically, this is the national championship match. Whether that gets kind of publicly distributed to the folks in Pittsburgh and Allegheny and Western Pennsylvania. I don't know, but I'm with you, John. If you're a soccer fan of any kind, if you only sit down to watch like five or six soccer matches a game, or if you're like a regular like English Premier League snob, mm -hmm. this is a game you want to sit in and watch because this is this is kind of history in the making for Western Pennsylvania. And it's a shame that a place like Piper's Pub or somewhere like this day, this week, this the one thing that we lose out on is that opportunity for you know, on a Sunday at 12, maybe the EPL games are over or the international, I don't know what the schedule is this weekend. I'm so out of it, but, <laughs> but, to, to, but to, to be able to have that opportunity for pit, um, you know, for people to get together and root, but we'll all have to do it from our living rooms and uh, we're down here in our basements uh, like I am, but, uh, and enjoy uh, some, 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 an ACC championship game. I'm really looking forward to it. Can't wait. Um, we'll definitely have some peripheral coverage on Pittsburgh soccer now for sure. Um, we uh, plan to uh, talk to some Pitt, uh, maybe players or Coach Vitovich in the coming day or so, hopefully on a break time and break day. I know they've been really busy because they've been, you know, they're still taking classes and stuff as, and there's a lot going on with, with, uh, with them, but, but we're, we're going to hopefully uh, get a hold of a few players or, 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 uh, definitely coach Vitovich. So looking forward to that um, as we preview the uh, championship game. But again, tonight Pitt wins three to three to one 
uh, over Notre Dame. They're in the ACC championship. Any parting thoughts, Mark? It's a big game. Uh, you know, I think that the, the challenge with, with Clemson is they, um, they attack wide really, really well. They attack with speed really, really well. I think this is going to be a game where um, Pitt's fullbacks are going to have their hands full, and I think that's really important. So, uh, you know, it, it will be – we'll talk a little bit more about it, you know, or write a little bit more about it. But this game is down to Jaster Lofelson uh, on one side and um, uh, Alexander Dexter, who's going to be helping out. Um, uh, with Cravalo. With, yeah, with uh, Cravalo on the other side. So yeah. it, it will be very important to kind of cover that width. Uh, that's my that's my take. Snuff out the wings and and go through the center and maybe they can they can win this one. All right. Well, looking forward to it. And again, Mark, thanks for joining me tonight. And we will maybe we'll catch up after a potential pit championship uh, victory. That'd be great. I'll hoist a beer with you. All right. Sounds good. Thanks.